Hey guys, it's Chung here. We're gonna talk about cheap airbrushes again. Now I get a lot of questions about cheap airbrushes and if it's good to use, if you can learn from them, etc., etc. Now I always stick to my old adage about getting the most expensive airbrush as you can. And um, hopefully that is the name brand and usually stick to name brands. Now that sometimes isn't uh, feasible for a lot of people. So we're gonna take a look at two cheap airbrushes they're both under $30. I'm going to go through the you know nits and gritties of it and how well it sprays and such like that. But if you're going to ask me, can you learn from a cheap airbrush? Yes, you can learn from a cheap airbrush. But again, I still promote at getting a very decent airbrush at a name brand. Now, I didn't always start with expensive airbrushes. When I was 17, 18, didn't really have a job at then, still going to school, I had to go as cheap as I could. And I was getting into scale modeling. And um, what I did was get a Badger 200NH, and at that time, it was a cheap airbrush. It was only a single action airbrush, but it did me good for what I needed to do. And it got me started into the hobby. Back then, there didn't, wasn't all these cheap, you know, made in China type of airbrushes you get on eBay. eBay wasn't even around then. So, in that case, you have to kind of think that, you know, where I started. You know, after the Badger uh, 200NH, I started playing with Pache, started playing with Wada. I started playing with um, all these other name brand uh, brushes, so they were a little expensive, but at that time, I was really into the hobby, and I didn't mind spending the money for it. So then again, I didn't just not only start cheap, I started with a single action airbrush, okay? So again, great way that you can do is learn from a cheap airbrush. Nowadays, with all the cheap stuff, let's really take a look at what we have out there and what you can get at something under $30. So first of all, let's take a look at this airbrush. This is one of the cheapest ones I could find. All right, came in this plastic case uh, plas with a plastic wrap. This piece of paper under here, this piece of paper is just showing you, you know, what the parts is of the airbrush and stuff like that. So, this is $10. I actually sniped this for $10. Shipping was six. So it came out a total of $16. There is a $16 airbrush there that's free shipping as well. So basically this is, in all essence, about a $16 airbrush. They just over, you know, surcharged me on the, shipping like most cheesy companies out there do. So, what is this airbrush? This airbrush has no backing. There is no company backing this. This is kind of stuff that, you know, it made out of the production line and and then some company just decided to grab it and sell it. I mean, look, it just has HD uh, 470, number 302 Taiwan. All right, <laughs> there's your guess there. Um, so, there you have it. This is a very cheap airbrush. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm taking this, I was holding it in my hand, I'm doing this right now. This feels very cheap, okay? I'm just handling this, putting this cap on, playing with the parts. It feels like, the best way I can describe it is that it feels like they took plastic and sprayed it, you know, with a chrome paint to make it look like, you know, it's metal or what have you. Um, it is metal though, it's just very cheaply made, okay, and I don't know how else to explain it or show it to you in a way that just, you know, try to describe the best I can. Um, lots of reports about people getting these cheap airbrushes, and then these threadings would, uh, you know, strip, and then they can't put stuff back on, and uh, what have you. So you're looking at really cheap, cheaply made stuff, and there's a huge difference between this Taiwan made thing, because just screwing this thing in here, I'm a little worried about it stripping. And like say the Chrome, uh, really tough built, sturdy stuff. You're just screwing this around is very smooth. And you know, the metal on metal action is, uh, best way to describe it again is smooth, you know? Uh, here is just like kind of rough. You hear that screeching and stuff like that. Again, you know, very cheap. We'll take a look at it, see how it sprays, but um, I'm not gonna take it apart for you because most airbrushes, dual action, gravity airbrushes, pretty much made the same. There's little differences here and there between the brands. Um, but yeah, other than like, you know, the name brands like Badger here, you do need a wrench to unscrew the, um, the uh, tip, the needle tip here. So that, that's really the only major difference I see in the design. Uh, it's the materials that they use to make this airbrush that kind of makes me uh, worry about you know, telling you guys to go buy something this cheap. Just feeling the tip, just moving the, uh, sorry, the uh, trigger. 
a huge difference between that and this. Okay, this is smooth. You got the control. This one very loose. Um, I think I press down, pull back, and then that's when the you know air comes in. There's like a little margin of error there. Okay, and just pressing it down. Oh, mm, yucky. All right, so it does feel cheap, okay? But you still can learn from it. And if that is the only budget you get, a $20 or cheaper airbrush, then there's, there, it's out there, okay? We'll see how it sprays in a bit. Next model we're gonna look at, this is $25, free shipping. So it's $25 all around. By the way, that, that cheap airbrush here is a 0.2 uh, needle, okay? This is uh, the D25 Master Airbrush, and this is by Tispeak Level. So I guess they went on to some production line and then put their name on it, you know, after reviewing it. So, if, you know, TCP Global is a pretty big company, so you don't really have nothing to worry about. Uh, this is a point two needle as well. And this, you can, there's already a noticeable difference when I pick this up. Um, you know, it feels more expensive uh, than metal, it, at least, the make of it. Unscrewing this a lot more smoother. Hey, nothing like you know Working with something like this or something like that. But again, this is their uh, $25 airbrush range uh, Airbrush they have uh, more expensive ones uh, more, you know uh, More, you know bells and whistle type of uh, uh, Airbrushes in the master series. So it doesn't mean that it's always like this. This also has a Wrench that you'll need to unscrew the uh, needle tip out with so and you know these sets come with all these things it comes with an eyedropper you know and a converter for you know a hose connection so you know you got little stuff that extra uh, stuff that comes with it i noticed in both of these airbrushes there's a screw down here i don't know what that is i don't know what that's for no clue this one i think has one too yeah screw down here too i really don't have no clue what that's for it's probably to hold in maybe the uh, the spring uh, mechanic back here, which ooh, that in itself is like this. All right, but anyways, enough about the make of it. This here is twenty five dollars. This here is sixteen. Okay. One of the things that I noticed when buying these, and this is very important, I have no clue where to get parts for this. All right, this is your generic name brand HD seven forty. Number 302 Taiwan, okay, 0 0.2, which I guess is the Nielsen. I don't know what the number 302 is for, probably the model number. But I have no clue. If I bump my Neil, I have no clue how to re, uh, replace it. There's no nothing tells me where I can replace this stuff. Maybe here in the specifications. Just some stuff to tell me what the maintenance and, you know, the layout of the brush. Nothing in the back. So. That in itself, I'll tell you right now, I do not recommend something like this. Something that has no company backing, there's no way you could find parts for it. Maybe you can if you do a Google search, but why go through all that? You know, for for something that where you could go to Masters and get their stuff. TCP Global backs this. They have parts that you could buy on the website for this airbrush. So, you know, that's one thing you have to keep in mind when buying an airbrush is, you know, when you get an airbrush, is the parts replacement chart cheap? thing you're going to look at is the needle tip the needle really are the two main things you're going to look at that that can mess up during you know dropping the airbrush or what have you because you will drop your airbrush no doubt about it if you set something heavy on top of it bends the needle so masters okay has their own parts you know you listed for each different airbrush so you could definitely buy it so that's where i would go uh for cheap airbrush go to tcp global do not buy this generic Chinese stuff because honestly, where are you gonna get the parts for it? Uh, easily, readily. Maybe you could search for it and do some you know, major research on it, but really, come on. Spend 10 more, 10 more dollars on this, okay? Just 10 more dollars, save up your lunch money, whatever. You know, raid your wife's lipstick fund, whatever. And then uh, get a G25 if you want cheap. So let's see how these spray. So what we're holding here is the HD 470, number 302, Taiwan, 002. I think from now on, I'll refer to these airbrushes as Taiwan, okay? So, again, I've already been through how, how it feels and stuff. Let's see how it sprays. I have it about maybe 15 PSIs, 
could use some Minotaur, maybe in black, or some baby, some of it in this baby here. Okay. And then this is, uh, let's make tea for Taiwan. Okay. Come on, fluted ocean. You did it. Seriously? Am I already having problems with this? Let's turn up the PSIs. Okay, there we go. Let's see for Taiwan. Now, how does a spray spray out? That's decent. I mean, this is good to get some good detail with it. Again, there there is a margin here. When you press down it and you pull back, there's about maybe a millimeter, two millimeter before it starts pushing the uh, paint out. That in itself should tell you, you know, the quality of the airbrush. There should be no margin of error like you should be able to start pulling back and paint starts coming out. Okay, so we're talking about, yeah, see that margin error barely messing me up right there. Okay, but not bad. This spray is pretty decent, and you can decently learn from this. So clean this out. This is supposed to be a .22 ne uh, nozzle needle. It doesn't look like it. It's a little bigger than it should be. The the spray a little it should be wide. It's a little wider than it should be. So I do not really think that this is a point two needle. That's another thing to keep in mind. Now while cleaning out this Taiwan airbrush, also notice that the make on this is uh, really hard. So it makes it uh, clean, uh, hard to clean. What happens is the uh, bottom of the uh, cup here it dips in into like the uh, funnel of the how the airbrush is made. So it makes cleaning it tough um, with the paper towels or whatever because it grabs to the side of it. Now, is it important? Nah. I guess you can use two tips to clean it. It just makes it harder to clean. And one of the things about, you know, using an airbrush is, you know, efficiency. This is not very efficient. I don't like how that's built at all. All right, so let's take a look at uh, the uh, master airbrush. Okay, so what we have here is the Master Airbrush, the G25. Small cup, as we already seen before. Pull back trigger, this feels a lot better made than a um, Taiwan Airbrush. So uh, let's take a look at how it sprays. Okay. It's a point two needle. Not bad. The flow is good. There is a little tiny margin of where the air starts coming out. You can tell here. See? Not bad. It's a little wider than I, I'm used to. But again, something you can get used to. Is the spray okay? Yeah. Not bad. Um, has a needle guard here, which makes it a little harder to clean off dry tipping. Okay. But it's nice to protect your needle against a gorilla like me because I'm infamous for bending my needle. So I like this. This is a nice light airbrush. It is built pretty well. I like it way better than Taiwan. Okay, and we get some good details out of this. This point again, point two um, needle, so that helps. Really, you're gonna get clogging on this because it is a point two needle. It has nothing to do with the make. It does some pretty good um, details. Here's your wide spray. Uh, the feel of it, not like a feel of a Patriot or a Water or what you know, the higher end of a Water. Or Grex or Harden side bed. Okay, um, other than that, let's clean this baby. See how easy it is to clean. Okay. Much wider spray. Unpull blast. Which is good. Good for uh, basing. What have you. It does look like a point two needle. 
on the spray. Okay. And let's give it a wipe down. Yeah, it's pretty steep, the, the cup on this model. But it doesn't have that weird reservoir dip that Taiwan has. Now that we took a look at two cheap airbrushes under $30, let's go ahead and go summarize and go through what you really need to look at. One, you want to get an airbrush that's actually backed by a company or some kind of company. Don't go to eBay and then say, oh look, very cheap, uh, $10, I'll just grab that. That has nothing, no one backing it because one, you know, you have to check if you get parts for it. What if you can't get parts for it and you ding your needle? What are you going to do? Buy a whole new airbrush? Now your airbrush costs $20 plus shipping and you could have got the uh, Master uh, G25, right? And then now uh, what if you ding it again and you go buy another, you know, cheap airbrush? That's $30 now. And then for another 30 you could get a name brand. All right, so if you're going to talk budget, you're going to talk cheap. Let's talk budget, right? Let's talk budget in the long run. You got to understand that if you lose these parts, you got to replace it. Can you replace it? That leads us into two. Are the parts more expensive or going to be more expensive to replace than the airbrush itself? One thing I like about badgers is that the parts for the badger airbrushes are very decently priced compared to other name brands out there. Awada, not that much more expensive. Harden Steinbeck, pretty expensive, I think in my, in my case. So you gotta look at it like buying a printer. Right? How much do the cartridges cost? And number three, yes, you can uh, learn from it. You can start cheap, do what I do, start cheap, and then go and get a better airbrush later. But you always got to keep in mind of the cost. You buy a cheap brush, buy a decent brush, then you buy a really expensive brush. We could just bought the really nice brush ahead of time for maybe 120, 130. Okay, so again, looking at the budget and the long run, but you never know, your situation might change, right? And for the quality, if you get a $10 cheap airbrush, it's going to be a $10 cheap airbrush. Nothing's changed in the world of uh, airbrushes. You get what you pay for. Buy a $10 cheap airbrush, it's going to feel really dinky. It's probably made really dinky. You're probably going to have problems with, if you're manhandling the airbrush too much, you probably strip the threads and stuff like that. Now, there are people out there who said, hey, I got a $10 airbrush, I'm still using it today. That's great. Great for you. You take care of your stuff not really feasible for some people some people might you know as a habit manhandle the stuff okay and it happens okay you're not everyone out there you can't use yourself as an example I can't use my example of everyone out there uh, to be able to you know afford an airbrush or use expensive versus cheap airbrush or what have you but if you go that low you're gonna get what you pay for the quality okay and uh, that's something you have to keep in mind if you uh, tighten the, um, the the needle tip too much suddenly it'll strip, then what happens? You're gonna to have to buy a whole new airbrush if it strips the threads inside the actual body of the airbrush. So that's something else to keep in mind. So that's it. I hope this uh, answered a lot of your questions about cheap airbrushes, why I really recommend you know name brands or at least an airbrush that has a company backing it the way you can get parts from. That's it, my name is Chung, you're watching WGC, and I hope you have a wonderful day. I will talk to you guys later.